Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I have a really cute, very simple project but so beautiful to share with you tonight. Um, the set I'm using is called Last a Lifetime and it's in our occasions catalog and while I kind of think of this as maybe more of a birthday or I should say anniversary or wedding type card, um, set I really love the sending all my love and I think that is so perfect for right now it's a great way to send cards to people just to tell them you're thinking about them so I've got some good tips and tricks to show you on how to make these I started my first one I did in this bright happy daffodil delight color and I just loved it so then I thought ooh <laughs> and I kept uh, making cards so we're gonna finish up using Highland Heather for our final version so I'm gonna start with a half a sheet of uh, Highland Heather cardstock I'll give that a good crease with my bone folder and then I'm going to take a four by five and a quarter inch piece of whisper white and this die set is really cool it has two parts to creating the um, the card so I'm going to start with this first piece and it just will fit perfectly on here so what I like to do is take a post-it note and just kind of tack it down right here so that it stays in place I'll run it through my big shot and then this is what I will have then I'm going to take the second piece of this die and I love this because you can use this piece separately or um, in conjunction with this border piece we had uh, a set similar to this at Christmas time a few years ago and so this is kind of like that and so I really love this look the, the layout of this so I've got that in position and just like before I'm gonna place this over now I am gonna run this through my big shot so give me just a second as I do that I love using the post-it notes though to hold everything in place that just works amazing now, I'm running it back and forth in my Big Shot just to make sure that I'm cutting through the all the cardstock. You can see some of the pieces have already come out. So I'll just set this um, here with my die brush. So we've got a die brush kind of piece for the Take Your Pick tool. So I'll just run this over. And then you can see most of those pieces are out or I can just poke the rest. You can see they're coming out pretty easy, which is great. Just poke the last few bits and pieces out. These little dots always seem to need a little convincing. <laughs> and then we've got that. All right, so we're good to go. Next up, I'll take and um, I'm going to put it on my card like this. I'm, I'll adhere it in just a moment, but I want to stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to use Highland Heather ink and just stamp that right up here. Now at this point when I was making this, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to embellish it with something. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to leave it like, like it is. And I think it looks fantastic. So to pop it up onto my card, I'm going to use a few regular dimensionals and then I'm gonna use a few of the mini dimensionals that I can get into some of these nooks and crannies I'll stick one more right there and then I'll use like I said just a few to put right in here and maybe one more right there you can see they fit right in there so that's great I'll just pop the backings off and then put them into onto my card now if we wanted to take this up a notch we could do that so I was thinking it would be pretty cool if we could take this beautiful image and maybe color it a little bit okay so to do that and by the way there we go got it <laughs> um to do that i'm gonna die cut my piece once again all right so i've got my die cut panel just like before 
Then what I did is I took another piece of four by five and a quarter inch paper. You can see I've embossed this. Here's how I did it. I set this piece on top and the reason is so that everything would be lined up just right. I kind of fit this in and you'll see how the die just sort of sets into where you cut it out. And then I put these two pieces together on my Big Shot. I used the multi-purpose platform no, um, no thin die adapter. I've got a cutting plate, my little embossing mat. Now these were available a couple years ago. If you don't have these, you could use a cardboard shim instead. And then um, like the backing of your printed paper packs, that would work. And then the thin die adapter. Uh, um, embossing plate, the white hard plate. And then I ran this through. Now, if you don't have these, um, you can, if you don't have this plate either, what you can do is just substitute layers of cardboard until you get the thickness where it'll go through. Um, it'll feel really loose, but when you pull it out, you'll see the embossing. Okay, so that's great. Now what I can do with these, which is awesome, is I can color them. So I'm gonna take and use a few different colors here. Um, I'm gonna start with green kind of as my basis. Just grabbing a couple more colors. I didn't have them all out yet. Um, let's see. And oh, we'll put in some Highland Heather because why not? Okay. Now, what I want to do is, first of all, it really helps if you have kind of your sample so that you can sort of see where the lines are going. And I know this is not super easy to see through the camera, but it'll work for tonight. Okay, so I'm going to take and color in some of this. Now, it's a little bit of the reverse. So like right here where it's solid, that's the white part. So it's going to get covered up. So what you want to do is add some of your colors, like so, and then, so that's the dark, and then I'll do the light over the top. Now the beauty of this is you can go outside the lines quite a bit without it affecting much. Now the blending, it, it will still blend, but it's a little different than before. Okay. So then I would say you want to be a little bit um, careful of where you're putting the color. Just because, like I said, some places it's going to be like a leaf. Other places it's going to be a flower. Um, and many of the places are like the negatives. So... I'm being careful not to go right up to this edge here because this right here is a flower petal. So we, we just want the leaf right here. Okay, and then likewise up here. Okay, I'll do a leaf for that little spot. All right, so now for these little flowers, I'm going to do them in my Mango Melody. I'm going to start with a little bit of the dark. And I'll just kind of put a little bit of dark at the base of each of these little petals. And then I'll continue like that. And then we'll blend to the lighter color out here. So obviously this is going to take a bit more time than if you were just coloring in an image, but I think it's a really cool effect. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm going to do my dark mango on the center portion of this. And then I'll do... Um, I'll do pool party here. So I'll do the darker pool party so that that would be on the base of each petal. And then I'll blend it with my lighter pool party kind of as we're going out to the edges. Okay. 
And again, you just kind of want to pay attention to where you're going. So you don't kind of cut into a flower you weren't intending to get in on. Now, if it helps, by all means, pull that piece back in and see how you're doing. And look at how beautiful that is. Oh, so gorgeous. So this is kind of, I suppose you could call this like a faux stained glass look. All right, for this rose, I'm going to start with my dark um, Highland Heather. And then I will blend out with my lighter color and just like the others. I'll kind of get in here. I'm sort of looking at where I'm going. And like I said, you can go out of, outside the lines, but you just want to be careful that you're not going into the next image. Okay. I'm just kind of blending that color. Being careful over here. And then I think I've got... I think this is going to be green right here. And maybe I'll make this green too. That's kind of a gray area, I think. And then I'll make this uh, yellow once again. I should have done that the first time, but that's okay. So I'll put the dark mango melody in the center. And blend out to the light. All right, the last I have is this, and I think I'll do that in mango as well. We'll just do the light version. And that looks pretty good. And I suppose we could make this green. Let's see. I'm kind of having these odd spaces be green. I guess I can make this one too. Okay. Now we're going to take this whole mess and turn it into our masterpiece. Let me put it right over the top. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love the look of this. All right. So now, of course, we can take one of our coordinating colors. And I think I'm going to stick with the Highland Heather. So I'll put this on a Highland Heather card base. I'm going to pop it up because I think that will look nice as well. So just like before, we will pop this up using our mini dimensionals. And of course, we definitely, sorry, mine are sticking to my fingernails. Oh, goodness. I tell you, I cannot wait till I can get my nails done again. It is my guilty pleasure and I miss it oh so much. When you shoot videos like I do, I really can't wait for the day that I get to get the nails back. Okay. Just getting some of the regular sized dimensionals. And I'm really being pretty generous with the dimensionals on this card because I want... Um, I want it to really stand up nice. Ooh, but that reminds me, I have not actually put my sentiment on here, so I gotta do that quick. Okay. Oh, perfect. I love when things work out. Oh, but I just think this is so pretty. And I love that you can do this with your blends quite easily without a lot of effort. You know, you could paper piece those beautiful colors in there, but I think you would agree that would take forever. And, um, and this is just so much easier. And I also like the fact that you can blend the colors, whereas that's, you could do it, but it's a little trickier with paper piercing or piecing, pardon me. Oh, that is a beautiful. 
Okay, so, and again, I think everything is so gorgeous on this. It does not need any additional embellishing. I just love it as it is. So I'm going to take and adhere, adhere this with my liquid glue. And voila, so beautiful. Now, if you have any questions about this, of course, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to answer the questions. Tell me which one you like for better, the, the blended shaded card or just the plain card. Um, I think they're both beautiful. I love the simplicity of this, but I kind of like the stepped up version of this. You could even add some clear wink of Stella under there before you attached this layer over the top. Uh, please know that if you need to purchase any of these items so you can make these projects yourself, please shop my online store. I would be so grateful for your business. I have a wonderful VIP rewards program that I would love to welcome you to be a part of. All those details are in the description of this video if you just click see more. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. There's a little button right here you can click on and that way you won't miss any of my awesome videos. I love sharing my passion of stamping with you and I can't wait to see you again soon. We will catch you uh, very shortly. Thank you guys for stamping with me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.